Imagine a tank so precise it could double as a sniper's weapon. A tank so well protected it could endure a nuclear strike. One so advanced in design that its crew can brew tea and use a built-in toilet without ever leaving the armor shell. This isn't science fiction but it's the British Challenger to main battle tank, one of the most formidable machines ever built, now fighting on the front lines of Ukraine. But what's fascinating is how this legendary tank is being used for a purpose it was never designed for. In March 2023, Ukraine became only the third country on Earth to operate the Challenger 2, following the United Kingdom and Oman. The UK handed over 14 of these steel beasts after months of intensive training for Ukrainian crews at Lulworth Camp in Dorset, England. There were early talks about sending another 14, but officially, that second shipment never happened. Built between 1993 and 2000 to buy Vickers Defense Systems, now part of Rheinmetall by Systems Land, a total of 446 Challenger 2S were produced, 408 for the British Army and 38 for Oman. By 2021, the UK planned to retire 79 of its 227 remaining tanks, while modernizing the other 148 into the next-generation Challenger 3 model. It's uncertain whether Ukraine's units came from those scheduled for retirement or upgrade, but it's clear that Kyiv received the standard Challenger 2 variant rather than the newer upgraded version. Each one retains its Hallmark L30A1 rifled cannon, celebrated for near-surgical precision, and was fitted with field modifications, such as cage armor atop the turret to resist drone attacks. Fourteen tanks may not seem like much in a war where thousands have been destroyed. Russia alone has lost more than 13,000 armored vehicles over 4,000 of them tanks. Ukraine's losses are lower, but proportionally just as painful, since it began the war with far fewer. Analysts estimated that Ukraine needed around 1,500 tanks to push Russian forces back the Challengers, by contrast, represented less than 1% of that figure. Yet their arrival carried huge symbolic and strategic weight. Before London's decision, most Western nations refused to send heavy armor to Kyiv, wary of Moscow's repeated red-line warnings. Vladimir Putin claimed Western tanks in Ukraine would trigger escalation, possibly even nuclear retaliation. But once again, that red line was crossed without consequence. After the Challenger 2S rolled in, shipments of Western armor followed in waves, more than 300 advanced tanks, including American M1 Abrams, German Leopard 1S and Leopard 2S, and dozens of Polish PT-9120 models, plus hundreds of Soviet-era T-72s from Eastern Europe. Originally, the Challenger 2 and its counterparts were designed for offensive warfare, eluding infantry, smashing enemy fortifications, and dueling enemy armor. During the early months of the full-scale invasion, both armies used tanks in these traditional roles. Russia threw thousands into its failed push toward Kyiv in 2022, while Ukraine's counteroffensive later that year liberated vast areas around Kharkiv. But the battlefield soon changed. The rise of cheap, lethal FPV drones transformed modern combat. Two-thirds of Russia's tank losses have been attributed to these flying kamikazes. As drones began dominating the sky, both sides learned a brutal lesson. Tanks are no longer safe at the front. By mid-2025, Ukraine and Russia had drastically reduced their tank assaults. The age of armor-led breakthroughs was over. Instead, tanks shifted to new roles, particularly in Ukraine's case, to a kind of long-range infantry support. And in this new mission, the Challenger 2 has proven to be a quiet masterpiece. Why? Because it's almost indestructible. The Challenger 2 is wrapped in Dorchester 2nd a generation Chobham composite armor, a classified blend of metals and ceramics believed to offer twice the protection of traditional steel armor against shaped a charge warheads. Ukrainian crews have already credited this armor with saving lives. One tank reportedly survived a direct helicopter rocket strike the blast dug 720 mm deep, yet the crew emerged unscathed and the tank drove itself back to base for repairs. The Challenger is also fully equipped for nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. Its turret filters the air, and its silhouette minimizes radar detection. The tank can instantly deploy thick smoke screens either through grenade launchers or by injecting fuel into its exhaust. Ukrainian operators even noticed that the British smoke dissipates faster than the Russian equivalent to 1 second versus 5 and giving the Challenger precious extra moments to re-aim and fire. Inside, the Challenger's layout shows the same obsession with crew survival. Ammunition is stored in compartments with blowout panels to vent explosions away from the crew. Propellant charges sit inside fireproof sleeves. The British Army also thought of comfort. The interior includes a kettle, a multi-cooker, and a rudimentary toilet. 
Compared to the Cramp T-72, the Challenger feels like first-class travel. These luxuries were not indulgences but survival tools, but the tank was designed to let its crew live sealed inside for three full days after a nuclear strike. Its control systems are just as advanced. The Fire Control Computer, built by Canada's computing devices company, features dual 32-bit processors and can adjust for crosswinds, humidity, and temperature. Both Commander and Gunner have high-resolution thermal sights from Thales Togs E system, capable of detecting small animals in the forest miles away. The Commander's panoramic optic grants full 360-degree vision, and the Gunner's targeting range stretches over 6 miles. As one Ukrainian loader, known as Stanislav from the 82nd Airborne Assault Brigade, explained, if two enemy tanks appear at different distances, our system locks them both instantly. The Commander just picks one, and the gunner fires with a single button. That's how precise the Challenger's targeting system is. The tank's centerpiece, the L-30A1 gun, remains unique among NATO designs because it's rifled rather than smoothbore. Its 120th millimeter barrel has spiral grooves that make shells spin, dramatically improving accuracy. It can fire armor-piercing charm three rounds, high-explosive squash head hesh rounds, and even smoke shells. The hesh rounds, in particular, can strike targets up to five miles away and are devastating against fortifications perfect for Ukraine's current battlefield tactics. In combat, the Challenger to functions less like a frontline spearhead and more like a mobile precision howitzer, supporting infantry from several kilometers back. Drones scout targets, relay coordinates, and adjust fire. Tanks hit bunkers and strongholds from afar, clearing paths for infantry to advance safely. However, even a tank this sophisticated has flaws. The rifled barrel wears out after roughly 500 rounds, a far sooner than the 1500 round lifespan of a smoothbore gun like the Abrams. And spare parts are increasingly scarce. Production of the All-30A1 and its ammunition ended nearly two decades ago. Britain's shift to smoothbore guns for the upcoming Challenger 3 means replacement barrels and shells are now limited to what remains in old stockpiles. To address this, in 2025 the UK Ministry of Defence extended its contract with Babcock International to keep Ukraine's Challenger fleet combat ready. The program not only repairs damaged vehicles, but also trains Ukrainian crews to perform complex maintenance in the field, while managing spare part logistics. This support has become crucial, as reports from 2024 indicated that only half of Ukraine's Challengers were operational, not because they were destroyed, but because maintenance crews lacked time and resources to fix them. The tank's other limitation is weight. At 60 to 0.5 tons, the Challenger 2 is heavier than most Western tanks but has a smaller 1200 a horsepower engine. In Ukraine's soft, muddy terrain, especially during spring and autumn, the vehicle often struggles for traction and occasionally bogs down. Yet despite these challenges, Ukrainian crews fiercely defend their machines. One commander, known by the call sign Hira, described the experience perfectly, it's like using a sniper rifle. You can hit your target from far away, then retreat before the enemy even knows where you are. Today, the Challenger 2 stands as a symbol of adaptation. Once designed for Cold War tank battles, it has become a precision strike platform, a tool for modern hybrid warfare where drones, artillery, and armored vehicles must operate as one. It may not be the fastest or the most numerous, but it's arguably the most accurate tank in the war. And in the deadly chessboard of modern Ukraine, that accuracy means survival. Because when a tank can fire with sniper precision, survive a helicopter rocket strike, protect its crew in a nuclear scenario, and even let them make tea while waiting for the next engagement, you're not just looking at a machine. You're looking at one of the last true armored legends still rewriting the rules of war.